out here. You planning on sleeping through the first week of your job? No, I wouldn't miss it for anything. Well, almost anything. With all these mud puddles, a young lady could be in distress. Any problem, Miss Woodruff? The angels do fly. Well, I believe I need some help. You won't forget about tonight, will you? I'm looking forward to it. So am I. Cowboy, get off. I didn't know it was private. Yes, it's private. Get off. Get off. Get up. You might as well, one way or another, I'm gonna kill you. Pick it up. Try it again. Pick it up. What is this? Some kind of cat and mouse game? Let me have your gun. You just stay out of it. Hold it. He said stay out of it. It's between the two of them. If you think I'm gonna stand by while the big man bully rags a kid. Oh, you got another thought coming, mister. Now you better keep your man back, Ramrod. Unless you want us in on it too. Hold him back for what? This two-bit puppy baiting session he's got going here. It's a fair fight, your man against ours. Fair? You call this fair? Between the two, your man's the only one toting that gun. The kid can pick up the gun any time he wants to. Pick it up. What's going on here? That's the big man here. Dell? I'm teaching a wet behind the ears kid a lesson in manners. That's enough. Nope. He still has it coming. Only you're doing all the shooting. Well, he's got a gun now. All he has to do is pick it up. What'd he do? Putting a high price on a pair of pants, aren't you? Maybe you'd like to pay for them. Any time, mister. Dell! Was it done deliberately? Deliberate enough.
Gun's been nicked a few times, probably blow up in your face. Just let him be. He ain't gonna get the chance to pull that trigger. Mr. Woodruff, get him out of here. top hand. He's been with me since I started here. You telling me no? I'm saying Dell wouldn't flare up without a reason. That boy must have provoked it. Yeah. Well, I'm going to pull out. We're too far apart, I'm afraid. Because of a quarrel between a couple of hot-headed cowboys? <laughs> That's the way it looked to you? Mr. Yates, you contracted to deliver 750 head of Woodruff cattle to market. I've already started my road branded. Yeah, well, I've lost two days driving time coming over here. We made a deal. Well, get yourself another man. Where? When? A man's word counts for something. We shook hands over this. Well, look at it this way. The way things stand right now, it wouldn't take much to get lead flying between our two outfits. You willing to risk that? I'll take care of my men, if you'll take care of yours. All right. I'll be over this afternoon to finish signing those papers. Whatever it was, it was for me to settle. You should never have come out there. I just wanted to see what was happening. Child, a sordid quarrel between two cowboys is nothing for you to be concerned with. The only sordid thing about it is Del Lingman. Why, he'd have killed that boy if you and Mr. Yates hadn't have stopped him. Perhaps the boy deserved it. You don't believe that. You seem to know more about the boy than I do. Have you had occasion to talk to him before? Enough to know he would not have started that fight. Father, you can't keep Del Lingman on now. Ricky, I need Del Lingman. I've kept you away from the hard, practical things that are necessary to run a big cattle ranch. You just don't know. I'd be lost without Del. All the same, I, I still wish you'd let him go. I can't. He's my right hand. All right. We'll let Del stay here and run the ranch and... And let's you and I go back home to Savannah. Honey, this is our home now. Why? Surely we have enough money now to go back to where you're respected, to where people have manners and breeding. Isn't it time we went back to where we belong? This is where we belong. Small misunderstanding. I heard there was a lot more to it than that. How'd it happen? It was a question of mud between me and a man named Lingman. A little bit on his pants, but my face got rubbed in it. Dell Lingman. Woodruff's top hand. Tell me about Woodruff. Woodruff? I don't know anything about him. Why? Curiosity. I'm thinking about Lingman. And maybe you better start thinking about him a little, too. How did it all get started, Jed? This business of every man wearing a gun on his hip out here. It's a hard country. Out here, a man had to be ready for anything. I ought to wear a gun. You? I'm a Westerner now. Not a southerner. It's time I acted the part. Lend me a gun belt, Jed. No. Then I'll have to get my own. Kid, he'll cut you in half. I'm gonna have to fight that man. Don't you ever try. 
there's no help for it, Jed. Looking for a man named Del Lingman. Looking for a man named Del Lingman. I hear you're looking for a man named Del Lingman. I hear you're pretty good at browbeating kids who don't even carry a gun. I wonder what you'd be like against a man wearing a gun. What's the matter? Can't that kid fight his own battles? I'm ready to draw. Jed, keep out of this, Rowdy. You keep that gun in this holster. This is personal. You draw and you come out of this, you better keep right on riding. Don't come back to that herd. You better do like he says, mister, and quick. Dell, you go on back to the house. I want to talk to you now. trying to do? Get yourself killed? You think I can't draw fast enough to take him? There's something you don't know, Rowdy. That kid's gonna put on a gun belt and come looking for Lingman. Don't stop a killing with a killing. All we have to do is keep him apart for two days, and we'll be out of here. Let's get back to the herd. Jasper says he's going to dinner with you, too. Says the Woodruff girl invited him. Have I? Yeah. Hi, Dale. I didn't think you'd be here, but I saw your light on. Where would I be? Well, there's some kind of a party going on at the big house. So? So, I thought maybe you'd be up there. Get your foot off that chair. Uh, there are three horses tied up out in front. I saw them. They belong to Yates? Colby? And that kid? You got something on your mind, Seth. Well, I figure with that kid being at that party with Vicky and all, uh... Get your foot off of that chair. Get out. Bedford, you haven't said much this evening, but from your accent, uh, it seems you're from the South. I am, sir. Uh, may one ask from where? Charleston. Savannah. But you never told me that. Well, that's where father's from. Perhaps you remember the name? Mason Woodruff? Well, Savannah is a large city, Miss Woodruff. One cannot know everyone in it. I don't recall the name, but I do remember your father's face. Seems to me that I've seen it in the newspapers. Well, father. The young man is mistaken. 
But you can't be sure, Father. A man in your position may easily be in the newspapers and not be aware of it. Well, when was this? Shortly after the war. Well, you were there then. It was a long time ago, my dear. I would think Mr. Bedford was too young to be much involved in the Civil War years. Too young to have served in the war, sir. Not too young to remember. You are mistaken, sir. Father, is something the matter? I'm very tired, my dear. I think we should end this. Yeah, yeah I think you're right. Uh, we got to be in the saddle kind of early in the morning. Thank you for a fine evening, ma'am. Thank you. I I'm glad you could come, all of you. Here, Mr. Woodruff. You may show Mr. Lingman in. Yes, sir. Yes, Dale? I didn't mean to break anything up, Mr. Woodruff, but about tomorrow. We're working Crooked Snake Creek first thing in the morning. Thought maybe you had special orders. Uh, we can find our way out. Thank you very much, Mr. Woodruff. Good night, sir. two accounts. Whatever it is between you and Woodruff, you let it lie. And when Lingman came in, you kept your mouth shut. Now, let's get going to camp. I got some business here first. Look, if you wanted to press this thing, why didn't you do it when you were in there? Tradition, Mr. Yates. You don't fight a man when you're a guest in someone's house. Well, you're not going to wait out here for him, so get up on your horse. I can't do that, Jed. Have you any idea what you'll be facing? I've held a gun in my hand before. Yeah, yeah, for shooting jackrabbits, but this man knows what he's doing. Starting from an even draw, he'd have a bullet in you before you even touch your gun. He'll kill you. You haven't got a chance. You believe him, boy? I am, Mr. Yates. Then you get up on that horse. That's an order. It's one order I can't take, Mr. Yates. It means anything to be my own man. I gotta go through with this. Out here. I'm not sure the right way of doing things, but where I come from, if you want to fight a man, you set a time and a place. You want to fight a duel, Mr. Bedford? Yes, sir. For the last time, Rome, let's get out of here. Ooh. What's the hurry? Maybe I've got something to say. You stop this, Woodrow. I think you will have to admit that Dell is not the aggressor here. Mr. Bedford has taken away my right to interfere, and I think he's taken away yours, too. This is between the two of them. Go ahead, Dell. You have a right to speak. Well, I was about to say, why wait? Let's make this the place and now the time. No. Let's do this properly, like Southern gentlemen. A duel is supposed to be fought at dawn. Tomorrow? The day after. That'll give the young man a chance to decide. Perhaps he's uh, made a mistake. There's been no mistake. Dawn will be satisfactory. Dell? Sure, sure. Whatever way you want it, Mr. Woodruff. Father, why? that? Well, you shoot as good as any man I've ever seen. But not good enough. It was dead center. But the target wasn't shooting back. You'd have been down three seconds before you fired. Kid, you're ready for lesson number two. Let me have that gun. What was that for? That's lesson number two. This gun is your life, kid. 
Never give it to anyone, not even your mother. Thanks. I'll remember that. Now I'm ready for lesson number three. How's he doing? Oh, he shoots straight enough, but he, he's slow, Rowdy. Langman will empty his gun before our room gets a shot You're of gonna him. You're going to have to put a stop to it. Hey, you mind telling me how? Draw! You're weak on the draw, kid. We're going to have to work on that. I want to stop this as much as the rest of you, but uh, there's only one man who can do that. Lingman. No, the man who gives Lingman his orders. I think we better show him the play we use in Wichita. Yeah, he might need it. chance, kid. If you hadn't started with that boy, none of this would have ever happened. The cattle would have been off, and I would never have known this boy existed. But he still would have known about you. What does that mean? Doesn't mean anything. But if you want that boy dead, that's the way you're going to have him. I never said that. Well, I guess you never did say it. Come in. Mr. Yates wants to see you, Father. All right, Dale. Uh, would you uh, leave us now, Vicky, please? I'd like to know how soon we're going to get moving. Not before tomorrow, Mr. Yates. Well, I'd like to move out right away. Why the rush? You know why the rush. I don't want that boy killed. His duel was the boy's own idea, Mr. Yates. Nobody forced him into it. You and I know different, Mr. Woodruff. What would you like me to do? Send Lingman away for a few days. By the time he gets back, we'll be gone. As easy as that. That's right, he'll take orders from you. It won't ruin his reputation to spare a boy's life. No, Mr. Yates, I'm not going to interfere. And I don't think you should either. That's your last word, huh? That's my last word. Outside the door. This is an affair between men, my dear. I suggest you stay out of it. Mr. Yates was right. All you have to do is send Dell away. Are you quite sure he'd go? Make him. And if he doesn't go, dismiss him. You're asking me to let this ranch fall completely apart. Let it fall apart. Sell it. Anything. It is not worth that boy's life. What is he, this boy that you're so concerned about? A young, arrogant hellion? Dell was right. He needs a lesson. Dell will kill him. The whole thing was the boy's own idea. Father, I don't understand. This isn't like you at all. You let it go at that. No, that is not good enough. I'm not a stranger. I'm your daughter. I need to know why. You need to do what you're told to do. Now, you go to your room and stay there. Father! Go to your room! <laughs>
Is it Becky? I want you to stop this duel. Oh, I don't think your father would like that. Why? Do you know something I don't? Because if you do, I wish you'd tell me. I'm only a ranch foreman, Miss Vicky. Yes, but you can stop this too. There's only one thing make me give up killing that kid. What? You. Never. Well, I hope you've made your goodbyes. Because that's the last time you're going to see that kid alive. Everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. What's that? Poetry? It's a good book. Ecclesiastes. That's what we need around here. A little more truth. Has the kid told any of you there's something personal between him and Woodruff? He ain't told me nothing. Wish. Don't look at me. I wouldn't know anything. Well, Rowdy, maybe we better find out. Rob? Rob. Whatever it is between you and Woodruff, I want to know. Look, maybe I can save you some time. Anything I know about Woodruff has nothing to do with this. My fight's with Lingman. Whatever Woodruff does or doesn't do, I'd find Lingman and I'd fight him. got to test himself. Yeah, it comes down to that. He'll either go a few inches or he'll be dead. something coming between us. We mustn't let that happen. You and I, we must always... Yes, Father. It means what you think it means. Where are you going? Why? Somewhere. Anywhere. But to leave the house in the middle of the night. To go away without... Oh, that boy. No, Father. Not Roman. Lehman. How long has this been going on? Is that what you really think of me? He's out there, isn't he, waiting for you? Yes, he is. Why, Vicky? Why? I couldn't see you become a murderer. Yes, that's what it would have been, dead against that boy. Oh, my God. That's... That's why you're going away with Lingman. Why didn't you stop that duel, Father? I couldn't. Why? It's for you. For me? 
Mickey, because of that boy, we could lose everything. Home, freedom, everything. I don't understand. Mickey. There never was an estate back in Savannah. At least not mine. I was a clerk on another man's plantation. He sent me to school. Gave me a position. And after the war, carpetbaggers descended on us. There was confusion, disorder. Everything was toppling. I helped to destroy the man I worked with. I took everything I could get, and I came west. That was why my picture was in the paper. A picture of a... a traitor and a thief. Vicky, I swear... Oh, look, Father! Your honor is a southern gentleman. I guess I deserve that. Why did you lie to me all these years? I think that's what I hated most. I'm not asking you to forgive me. I am asking you to try to understand. You don't know what it was like in those days. The world crumbling around us. I, I had you to think about. Father, I never needed this. I suppose. I knew that too. The rock bottom lie. Was I needed it for myself. Is that why you didn't stop this too? You must stop it now. Do you realize, if that story comes out, everything I've built up for you will lose it? Everything? Doesn't matter. I don't want it if it means the death of that boy. Then I don't either. Not at all. Stay inside, please. You won't need that extra horse. Just like that, huh? In the morning, you draw your back pay and get out. All these years doing your dirty work, and now I'm just another hand. Much worse than that. You owe me something, Woodruff. Mr. Woodruff. Never mind all that. I know what you are. All right. Then maybe you ought to know it's all over. We're not going to do anything to that boy. That's not the way I see it. No? I got a share in all this, Woodruff. About a one-half share. And I still intend to be part of the family. Damn it! be all right. I want to settle with that kid. Whatever he knows is too much. And if anybody's going to put you in jail, it'll be me. And I'll be back for you. Kid. I saw your empty bedroll. I'm all right. I just couldn't sleep. You still want to go through with this? Yeah. Nothing I can say will make you change your mind. No, Jay. Nothing. Hey, kid. 
remember what I said. You've got a chance. Now, neither one of you make a move. Don't do it, Kobe. It's not you that I'm after. He isn't wearing a gun. Give him yours. Lingman? Give it to him. Other hand, Colby. Thanks, Mr. Yates. Well, what are you going to do now? Father's going back to face Savannah, and I'm going with him. Oh, I think you'll find it a forgiven town. Maybe you'll go there someday, too. I hope so. Rome, you ready? Ready. Same wedding, same day. I'll always be your little girl. Yeah. Just don't panic. Only God can live life. <laughs> this season, check out new original movies only on the Hallmark Channel. somebody comes up with the idea that a cattle drive is like a military campaign. They also think the trail boss has the power of a general. They're a little wrong. For one thing, his pay is lower. For another thing, his men can quit when they want to. And finally, you can order 3,000 head of cattle to do anything. But you can't court martial them if they don't obey. I found that out. My name's Faber, trail boss. I found some water just over that rise about three miles. Open range? It's open except for an Indian village. The Comanches? Yeah, but they're feeling peaceful these days. 
I talked to the chief. He said it's all right for us to graze the herd here three or four days, as long as we don't make trouble. After five days of dry drive, who's going to make trouble? That's what I say. Hey, wait. Get the rifles. Let's go hunt. The Comanches? Rabbits. The hills out there are full of them. Hey, you ever taste my rabbits, too? Yeah, but I'm willing to go get ourselves some anyway. For me, when are you gonna get one? Right now. <laughs> hey, Pete. Leave him be. Boy, he's not only sick, he's starving to death. He had some food and water, but it's all gone. You just leave him alone. Well, he's bad off, maybe dying. Ain't nothing you can do about it. There mighty well is. Listen to me, you ain't gonna cure him. Now, what do you got against a sick old Indian? That old Indian ain't sick, he's dead. Dead? Well, yeah, he's just as good as dead. He was put in that cave to die by his own people. Well, that was mighty nice of him. Custom the Comanches have, and an old man like that gets sick, they just count him off as dead. Well, they made a mistake. Well, their medicine man decides these things, and he don't make mistakes. As far as the tribe's concerned, the old man's no longer alive. Well, he is alive. I wish I know how you feel, but we can't get mixed up in these Indian things. If I could just get him back to camp, you'd have the whole tribe down on us. Look, we gotta graze that herd here three or four days. We can't take any chances having trouble with them Comanches. Well, I ain't sure about what I want trouble with them. If it was me laying in there and somebody could help me but just walked off. Well, this is different. He's seen it happen to others. He knew when his time came, this is what they'd do. He'd probably want it this way. Come on. Well, nobody wants to just lie down and die, not when they got a chance. One thing about it, he's alone. Yeah, you'd better follow him in, though, Quince. Behind him. Right. Coffee's ready. Now, later. Say, Pete, uh... You did say those Comanches are friendly, didn't you? Well, they said they were. Then how come one of the top men is riding in here? Well, we got nothing to worry about. Comanches don't attack one in a bunch. Yeah. I'll have that coffee now. Hey, Wishbone! What's the matter with you? Welcome.
I have come for Sankeno. Who is that? The one whose body you have stolen. I don't know what you mean. You took Sankeno from the Cave of the Dead. Well, maybe he just got up and walked away. The dead do not walk. Well, maybe he wasn't as dead as you thought. I mean, maybe he was just a little bit dead. Two men took him from the Cave of the Dead and brought him here. I followed their tracks. Wishbone, you know anything about this? I gotta get breakfast ready. I see no reason why any of my men would bring a dead body here. I think you lie. No. If I find a body in my camp, though, I will let you know. You have my word on that. The body must be back in the cave by the time the sun sets. If it is not, we have no wish to shed blood, but we will come upon you and take back our own. Wishbone. Wishbone. How am I going to get my work done with everybody talking to me all the time? What do you know about bodies and medicine men? I ain't familiar with neither of them. I wish. You might as well tell Mr. Favor about that fuss you made at the cave. I didn't make any fuss. I just wanted to cure that Indian. You said don't, so I didn't. Not then you did. Wishbone? Well, I was going to tell you about it, boss. This morning... Then but... you did interfere. Well, just a little bit. What did you do with the body? Well, it wasn't a body at all. He was hardly sick. He's alive and doing very well, thank you. Where is he? Well, it's a supply wagon. You said there were two of you who took him from the cave. Who helped you? Well, I went back there last night with Mushy. Well, it wasn't his idea. That's the only thing you didn't have to tell me. Let's take a look at that patient of yours. <laughs> What is your name? I am Sarkino. Your medicine man was just here. How you feel? Good. A uh, couple more days, you feel better than that. Uh, Solo has said that I die. He is a very strong medicine man. Oh, Solo don't know nothing about medicine. All you had was a little touch of the fever. Uh, I do not wish to to go against medicine men, against ways of my people. I should not be found alive. To my people, I am dead. The way he's acting, you'd think I did something terrible. Maybe you did. Well, in any case, he can't stay here. You strong enough to ride? All right, Pete. Have a couple of horses saddled. Take him back to his village. Whether they like it or not, huh? It's done is done. What's done is done. Timer, home. Home. Yeah, let's go.
Santa, Chief of the Comanche. I bring you San Kino. I see no one. Stand right here. The man San Kino is dead. He cannot be here. Well, there was a little mix-up about that. Uh, one of our men, he didn't know what he was doing was wrong, but he brought San Kino to our camp. I know nothing of what you speak. Has anyone come into this tent except the white man? No. I understand your tribal customs, but my chief told me to bring San Kino to you. Your chief lied when he said the body was not at the camp. Well, no, my chief didn't even know that San Kino was with us when you were there. The body is not yet back at the cave. The body's standing right here. I see only you. All right, so I'm the only one here. You figure out what you're going to do with San Kino. Asunta! The white man laughs at us. No, I'm not laughing. You have said our medicine man does not know what is true. You say San Kino is not dead. You shame us. You shame us solo before our people. Well, I didn't mean to do anything like that. You will return to your camp. You will tell your medicine man to undo that which he has done. You will return as you came with what you came. All right, San Kino, let's go. Hey, Mr. Wishbone, what are they going to do with that old Indian? How do I know? You think they're going to kill him? Well, let them do what they want. What's well, old Comanche to me? Mr. Wishbone. Let him go, huh? Yeah, they let him go. Oh, what are you looking so sour about? Well, now you've got them Indians thinking you're a white medicine man with very strong magic. Oh, they do, huh? As a matter of fact, they want you to back up on some of your magic and... Well, and what? They want him dead like they believe he is. Well, what do they expect me to do? Kill him? Now, what are you wagging your head about? You make it right. You make me dead. Tries to breathe, but it is hard. Please. Another one. What lead him on? Walk on. Walk on. My magic does not work. Uh, if the great spirit does not get Sankeno. He will take all the young one from us. What's everybody looking to me for? Just trying to figure how a little fella like you could get us into such big trouble. Well, I didn't do anything. All I did was... <sighs> now, look at that. The healthiest Indian I ever saw. He's gonna outlive us all. Yeah. Yeah, he sure is. If them Comanches come down on us. What are we gonna do with him? We may not have to do the deciding. The 
There is nobody in the cave of the dead. If you'll just look right over there, you'll see him. If you want to know who cured him, I can tell you. I did. You are a medicine man? And a trail cook, too. <laughs> a man who does a woman's work. Squish! He does not know the ways of the Comanche. He is sorry for what he did. There is no time. Bad things are happening in my village. There is a great sickness now among the very young. The great spirits want some of them in exchange for the old man you have stolen from him. We honor your customs. We did return San Kino to you. It is for you to do with your people as you will. But do not ask us to kill him for you. One wasi wani wani. One mana sankero. One mana sankero. One wana sankino. What's he saying, Pete? There's some kind of a curse. It's supposed to be bad for the old man. One wasi wani wani. One mana sankero. One mana sankeno, one one. One wase, one mana sankeno, one mana. Senor boss, he asked for death. Yeah, I know. But he, Sankino is still with us. That is not good, senor. You got some ideas on how to get rid of him? Oh, not I, senor. But I am afraid. What? The curse of the medicine man. One should not laugh at it. Nobody's laughing. You better all get some sleep. Si, senor. Boss. You think we ought to double the guard on the herd? Before. Although maybe those Comanches started out being friendly, but they sure ain't anymore. You think doubling the guard's gonna keep away Indian spirits? I don't believe in Indian spirits, boy. Then you'd better get some sleep. We'll be moving out in the morning. If they let us. What was that medicine man of yours doing? He was calling on great spirits to destroy you. Well, I'm willing to take my chances against any of his spirits, great, medium-sized, or small. What's the matter with you, anyway? Don't you like living? I liked life when I lived. I was tall and straight. I rode and hunted and fought. But time for living is past. Do all of you want to die with me? Boss, the old man thinks they're going to come down on us. Not much we can do about it now. That medicine man will be making spells for a while. By the time he finds out they don't work, we'll be through grazing and on our way. These are getting restless. Yeah, so am I. What do you got to be restless about? Same thing as them. I seen that medicine man cast a spell on us, Joe. You don't believe in spells, do you? I don't know what I believe in. All I know is them bees are restless, and so am I. Is that for us? Better get in there and quiet them down. Yeah, if we can. Mr. 
Got over it, whatever it was. Just a dozen women come up, I guess. You sure that's the only reason, boss? What other reason could there be? Then let him go. What's happened? He was going to kill Wishbone. Not with any spell, neither. With this, some medicine man. I thought it was Sen Kinner you wanted dead. Why did you try the knife on him? It is the white medicine man that holds Sen Kino's spirit prisoner. What are we going to do with this, Jasper? We'll let him go. Which bone or not? You can get back to your village, but try and remember, you're a medicine man. Stick to medicine.
There is no water in the stream. Spirit is angry with us. He has taken the water from our lips. He will soon take the breath from our lungs. The white man made a dead man walk, but you said he meant no harm. The young ones in our village are dying, but again you said the white man meant no harm. Now that the water has dried up in the river, do you still say that the white man meant no harm? I say that now the time for the shedding of blood is here. I don't know how long it's going to take for that medicine man to decide that his magic spells ain't working, but we don't want to be here when he does find it out. We'll be moving the herd and moving it fast. I want every man to stay in the saddle until we're safely through the valley. What I've been trying to tell you is they ain't waiting any longer. Can you read them? Yeah, they're asking for war parties from other tribes. We ain't gonna have a chance getting out of this valley. The tribes coming in, they'll be hitting us from all sides. Asus, settle my horse. Si, senor. Where are you going? You and me are going to that Indian village. <laughs> You know that river we've been watering the cattle? What about it? There ain't no more water in it. It ain't possible. Water line was high in the riverbank just yesterday. I know that. The only trouble is today there ain't a drop of water in the river. Take months for that to dry up. Mr. Favor, it didn't take months. It took overnight. Now, I don't know what kind of magic this medicine man's got, but offhand, it's say it was pretty powerful. There ain't no water there. There ain't any in the Indian village. Maybe that's why they decided not to wait. The only thing is, I'd like to take a look at that river with my own eyes. Me too. Let's take a look at it. What are you jumping around the bar? There is something I remember. Well, there's something I'd like to forget. That's you and your whole tribe. If water come back, I believe tribe would not attack. And if it'd start raining stew, I could stop cooking. No, there's something I remember about the river. Yeah, what? My people believe water vanished because of you. But it has done this before, when I was small boy. You sure of that? Come on, boy, you and me are going for a ride. Dry as a bone. We were watering our cattle here only yesterday. It's like magic. No matter of speaking. The Indians must be thinking it's magic, all right. But ours, not theirs. No wonder they sent out smoke signals to call in the other tribes. Wishbone don't know his own strength. Whatever chance we had for making a run for it's gone now, huh? Yeah. No use hanging around here. Water ain't gonna come back by itself. Mr. Faber, me and San Cano, we got something to say. Go on. My friend here, he thinks he knows where the water went. It was a long time ago. I'm not sure I remember. Water went away once. I was a small boy then. It went away, but then they find it again. They found the water? Where was that? It had not truly gone away. It had gone under the earth. Yeah, from what he told me coming here, it went into an old underground bed upstream of here. Well, how'd they ever find it again? Many men dig for it. When they had dug far enough, the water come back into the river again. You know where it is? No, I am not sure. Well, there's an awful lot of country to dig up up there. If we go upstream, maybe we find something help me remember. Well, let's get at it. Thank 
Chino. No. Recognize the place? I think so. That fallen tree. I sit in it and watch men of tribe dig. You sure? After so many years, how can I be sure? I'll have to do. Teddy, get back to the herd. Leave six men guarding it. Bring back the rest with shovels. Start digging. Right. Wishbone, you stay here with Sinkino. Show the men where to dig. Where are you going? Pete and I are going back to that Indian village. What for? Let's go, Pete. Have you come to beg? Come here to speak with the chief of the tribe. I am the chief. You must know this isn't the first time the water has disappeared. I know of no such thing. But the man you set out to die does. He remembers from when he was a small boy. Maybe the others have forgotten. We have heard enough. I would hear more of this. Every once in a while, the water goes under the ground. My men are digging to find it now. What I want from you is time. Time to run? We could not get more than a mile away before you cut us off. We have read your smoke. I am not thirsty for blood. If the water comes back, you and your men will be allowed to leave in peace. Only the blood will bring the water back. We'll have blood if we don't get the water. The water will not come back because the white men dig in the ground. I will decide. I will give you till the sun is straight up in the sky. Yet, huh? Not a sign of water yet, boss. Well, look, the things we're digging our own grave. Dig with your shovel and steady your mouth, Teddy. What'd you find out? They gave us till noon. Oh, that's only a couple hours yet. Wait a minute, boss. We don't even know if we're digging in the right place. San Cano says this is the place he remembers. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I hate to rely on the memory of a man 80 years old to save my life. You know, we could settle this whole thing real easy. If we kill that old Indian. No. Even if he died in his own now, they wouldn't be satisfied. They want to see water running through the stream again. Teddy, if you want to take off, go ahead. Wouldn't be much chance unless all of us went. Well, all of us ain't going. <laughs> what are you grinning at? If the Indians got their hands on you, they probably wouldn't even bother about the rest of us. All right, come on, we're wasting time. Wishbone, get out of there, I'll spell you. Hey, yeah, Wishbone, you and Mushy get on back to camp. Fix up some grub. Got it? Take a break. Well, what are you waiting for? Huh? You heard Mr. Faber, get on back to camp. Yeah, I thought you was coming too. You ain't paid to think, now go on and do what you're told. Yes. I am. 
I'm so old. Maybe I do not remember the right place. Uh, I guess it isn't your fault. But if they don't strike water, the St. Keno, supposing the white medicine man with the big magic, the one that made you live again, was to show up in your village, what do you think would happen to him? You would die. Well, yeah, but aside from that, do you think your tribe would be satisfied? Would they let the rest of the white men go? find out. It's all life, old timer. to make you an offer. You call off the war party and I'll stop making magic. I do not think you are the one who made the magic. No? Then who do you think is? Mushy, what are you doing here? I ain't doing nothing, Mr. Wishbone. He says he is the witch who took San Kino from the dead. Him? He couldn't even fix a hangnail. Then why did he come? That's what I'd like to know. Well, I heard what Mr. Teddy said. I thought if I got here first. Well, didn't you know what they'd do to you? We cannot know which of you has the great magic, but we will find out. All right. What are we fooling ourselves for? There ain't no water here. Even if there was, we never get down to it before the Comanche come down on us. Pete, go ahead. We'll have to take a chance on uh, her doing some running. Jeff, take those horses back up on the hill. Hey, Scarlet, dig me a hole about here. The rest of you better get out of here. Trickle. If that didn't do it, nothing will. So we dig some more. Hey, then it's getting pretty close to noon, boss. You thinking of killing the Indian again? No, sir. It's just that if I'm going to meet those Indians, I'd rather do it with a gun in my hand, not a shovel. Mr. Favor, if we stick with the herd, we ain't got a chance. 
Well, if we stick together, head on to that valley, them Indians might think twice before they're jumping us. What do you say, Pete? Well, we might have a chance if we leave the herd. All right. My memory not good anymore. Tranquino. Look, we'll be breaking camp. All of us are going out of the valley. You want to go with us? Not all of you are going. Hmm? The one who took me from the cave, he did not go back to your camp. Wishbone? Where'd he go? To my village. Did he say why he did? He hoped to buy your lives. We can't let him do anything to a wishbone. We better go get him. But wait! You don't have to do anything of this sort. If Wishbone was dumb enough to think he could buy off the Comanches with his scalp, that's his business. You think you're talking for it, Teddy? Well, I guess I'm talking for all of us, boss. Leastways, I got a right to find out. Now listen, all of you. We got a chance to make a run for it. Who wants to take it? Now look, I got nothing against Wishbone, but he got us into this. Why do we have to die in a car of him? Well, he's keeping you from going. Not you or anybody else that wants to go with you. Any of you coming with me? You're the one that's going to kill us all, keeping us here. So why don't you get out? You've been good to me, Mr. Favor. Now I got to knock you down. For your own sake as well as ours, I got to knock you down. Don't try that, Teddy. I got to, Mr. Favor. Gee, I'm sorry, Teddy. Boss, look at that. Boss, that's sand. That's wet sand. That's right. San Quino really was talking about this. Water here, all right. Huh? Quince, get the men back to camp. Get the herd ready to move. Pete, you and me are going to the Indian village. Huh? I'll be jiggered, Flavagast. You're going to the village with us, San Quino? No, not San Quino. My place is not in village. Now, look, old timer. You're not going back to that cave. You're going back to the village, where you belong. Your magic is very good. You're mighty well told. You can make the waters come and go as you wish. Now you're going to untie us? Do you think we're fools enough to let such a powerful medicine man live? Now, just a minute. I'm glad to see you're cutting my men loose, Pete. He is too powerful a medicine man to live. He didn't have anything to do with the water coming back into the river. I can tell you who did, though. Who? One of your own people. He was the one who remembered when the water disappeared once before. He was the one who showed us where to dig for it. He is dead. We are grateful to you. You ought to be grateful to San Quino. Maybe you are right. I will send signals to the other tribes. You'll have a safe journey. I'll leave San Quino here, where he belongs. Well, no hard feelings. 
And uh, from what you told me about those sick kids of yours, uh, I think they got the colony. Now, you, you try a couple of these on them. That's the cave where we found old San Kino. What are you doing here? I am where I belong. Well, I guess things don't change easy. I wish you a safe journey. We wish you the same, old timer. What do you make of that? Who's to know? Say, Pete, let's get out of here before Wishbone finds out.
Okay, don't find it. All right, let's get back to work. Show's over. Oh, you it, young? It's felt better. Still good enough to haze beef with, ain't it? Yeah. Hey, Mr. Favor? Hmm? boss around over there answers to Gil favor favor mm -hmm. mr. favor can, can you use another hand ever work cattle I worked about everything one time or another you paid the end of the drive, so better not sign on unless you mean to stick. I'll be staying. All right, you're a drag. Ready to move out, boss. All right, he is a ramrod. Frank Trask. Put something behind your belt and catch you up. Dead, dead, boys. Can't hardly hold my arm up. Any takers? Roddy, how about you? Oh, no. You've already taken everybody in camp, Scarlet. No, not everybody. Yeah, Trask, how about it? Why don't you give him a try? Yeah, somebody's got to take him down a peg or two, Frank. Or there just won't be no living with him. No, I don't think so. Oh, come on, you can do it. Not interested. Look, he's just full of bluff, plus a few tricks. That's all. Look. All you have to do is show him that scar real good and most likely stare him down. Just stay away from me. Just like a grizzly bear. What's that all about? I don't know. Started off all kind of friendly, and then Quince mentioned something about his scar, and Trask went off like a lump of black powder. Make that a wagon load of powder. I feel like I just took on a locomotive. I know, you don't have to tell me. I'm fired. I'll decide that. Why'd you jump Quince? Ask him. I did. Look, I didn't mean to start any trouble. I just wanted to be left alone. You seem to be awful touchy about that little scratch on your face. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. I just want to be left alone. If that's asking too much, maybe you better fire me. Best get some sleep. We've got a long haul tomorrow. <laughs> Morning, Mr. Trask. Morning. Kill of Salt Springs. I'd like to have a word with you. Uh, yeah, sure. Sure 
Here's a beautiful morning, eh? Well, I got a feeling this is gonna be a scorcher. You see that haze? Boy, when you see a haze like that, Mr. Wishbone says you're mighty well told it's gonna be a scorcher. Sheriff Keeler here wants to ask you a few questions. What about? I understand you joined the drive yesterday. That's right. Ever been in Salt Springs? No, why? A rancher was killed near there a couple of days ago. What's that got to do with me? Some food was taken. I figure the killer's some saddle bum. A man strong enough to break that rancher's neck with one blow. Well, I've been working a ranch up near Hyattville. No, he did come in from the north. Smart man, might have circled the herd, come in from the opposite direction. Let's take a look at your saddlebags. Help yourself. Your bedroll? Take a look. Yeah, there's nothing there. I guess you're clean. Oh, say, Sheriff, uh, how long do you figure you'd be? Oh, two hours, maybe three. It's only ten miles there and back. Sooner the better. Pulling out for a little bit. Not pulling out? Why? Well, we're going to have company as far as Grayson. What company? I don't know. The boss didn't say. Load up the wagons, unload the wagons, hitch up the team, unhitch the team. Someday somebody around here is going to make up his rock headed mind. Curtis, this is Mr. Gil Favor. He's the trail boss. Pleased to meet you, Miss Curtis. And this is, um... Rowdy Yates, ma'am. Mr. Favor, I'm obliged. If there's anything I can do to make your trip easier, you just tell me, huh? If you'll tell me when I get in the way. Well, I'm leaving you in good hands, Miss Curtis. I'll head back for Salt Springs now. Goodbye, Sheriff, and, and thank you for your kindness. Not at all, Miss Curtis, and good luck. Thanks, Favor. Well, uh, you know, excuse me, man. We, we got to get started. How to get the men moving. Uh, now, boss, Wishbone, get that wagon going. Uh, say, uh, and Mushy, boss, don't forget anything. Uh, Mr. And Mushy, be sure to put out that fire, huh? Say, uh... Oh, uh, who's gonna ride with Miss Curtis? Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, Trask! <laughs> somebody to drive this wagon. Now, Miss Curtis, this is Frank Trask. He'll uh, help you handle things. I thank you for your help. Miss Curtis is blind. Mr. Trask? 
Yeah. I hope I won't be too much trouble for you. Better get going if we're gonna keep up with that herd. <sighs> Being a drover must be a hectic life. Always on the move. How many cows are there? Or do you call them steers? Steers, beeves, not much difference. How many are there? About 3,000. You're not very happy with having to watch over me, are you? Well, it ain't that. It's just that I thought maybe you didn't feel much like talking. Sometimes it helps to talk. Sometimes. It's all right if I throw away yesterday's beans. You forgot everything I ever taught you. Not, not. How about it, Wishbone? We're going to have to wait all night to get poison. All right. It's your stomachs. Let's see if you can come up with some meat next time. Next man. Thank you. Mr. Trask, please don't make the mistake so many people do. I'm blind, but I'm not helpless. I have that much of my father. I think my blindness hurt him more than it did me. But he never sheltered me. He let me grow up and discover things for myself. There's a reason for everything. Even my blindness, God saw to it. That was his outlook. It used to be mine. What is the reason for his death? There isn't any reason any sense. A man breaks into our house and steals some food. Did he have to steal my father's life, too? Why? Some things just don't have a reason. And maybe... Maybe the man was scared. Maybe he didn't even mean to hurt your father. Does that make it right? I'm not saying it's right. It's just so. It's hard, Mr. Dresk. Believing it's so, I mean. Three days ago, my... My life was sure. Safe. Now all I have is an aunt I don't even know. It's not the end, Miss Curtis. I remember a preacher once telling me that every year you live is like a chapter out of a storybook. You're just turning a new page, that's all. And crying about the yesterdays don't make the tomorrows any better. You learn to live with that and... you learn to live with almost anything. Even yourself. Mr. Trask? Yes? Will you promise me something? What is it? If I ever do that again, I feel sorry for myself, I mean. You tell me. 
Might be I'll even try telling myself. Now, Abilene Dodge, now, they sure ain't short on females. But what I hear about Denver now, that... Right behind you. Just get you a plate. I only hope the dust didn't make you lose your appetite, Miss Curtis. Not at all, Mr. Favor. Another day or so, I might even ask for a job. <laughs> There you are. Be careful, it's hot. Bless, O oh Lord, this food for our use, and us to thine holy service. Amen. 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 Would you like some coffee, miss? Miss Curtis likes tea. We don't have any tea. Tell you, ma'am, you can have coffee, hot, cold, old, or new. That's all Wishbone knows. Now, that ain't nice, Quince. You know Wishbone can cook anything. It burns. Why, you miserable, low-down, flea bit. Never you mind, Mr. Wishbone. Coffee will be fine. And your cooking is delicious. Would you mind saying that again, ma'am? Just a little bit louder. I said you're an excellent cook, Mr. Wishbone. Marshy, find that can of tea we got. Why are we stopping, Mr. Trask? My horse. Here. Hey, Yates! My horse broke loose. Well, one of the boys will pick it up. That's all right. I better get him. No, you can't go back there with Miss Curtis. I don't mind, Mr. Yates. Oh, I do, ma'am. Get moving, Trent. Do some nations? It's the other way around, senor. Here, a picture, senor, to Curtis. Saddlebags. I think they belong to Senor Trask. Hmm? See? How is it he has a memento of a girl he only just met? I don't know. Guess you'd have to ask him. Of course, then you'd have to tell him you'd been going through saddlebags. Oh, senor, I have just lost my sense of curiosity. Mm hmm. What'd you do with my saddlebag? The wagon with the others. Thanks. You know that? Just before you hit me, too. But I guess I had it coming. Last hand, boss. You're in or out. Out. Oh. Well, I guess I'll bed down. I think I'll go check on Miss Curtis. See how she's feeling. I'll check on Miss Curtis. When we first met, I, I thought you'd be one of those gruff men who fight what they can't understand. But when I was talking about my father, you were... Do you know what compassion is, Mr. Trask? Passion. 
Yeah, I guess so. Well, that's what you had. All the gruffness went away and you had a sort of gentle strength. You're giving me more credit than you ought to. Tell me about yourself. Much to tell. Born in Pennsylvania. Had a farm. Pretty good one, too. Went in the war and got captured. When I got out, I went back, but there wasn't any farm left. Now I take a job where I can. Work off the land most of the time. Don't you want to do anything? I mean, don't you have any dreams? Everyone has a dream somewhere. What's yours? Oregon. I always wanted to go to Oregon. They say there's so many trees there. So much land. Room for a man. Oregon. Even the word sounds good. Fresh and, and clean. Where a man could lose himself and find himself, maybe. No place like that around here. Do you want to be alone? I want to get another farm. I'd work it, work it hard. I wouldn't bother no one, and no one would... Hey, look. What is it? What do you see? It's a shooting star. Oh, how wonderful. I remember we used to spend just hours watching for shooting stars. If we saw one and said the words just right, our wish would always come true. Starlight, star bright. First star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might. Have the wish I wish tonight. It was a lot of years ago. Now I can make the wish even if I didn't see the star. I wish that... that you'd get to Oregon and everything would be just the way you want it to be. Did you make a wish? Yes, ma'am. Good. Mine probably didn't count anyway. You were the one who actually saw it. Does it bother you if I talk about my blindness? No, it don't bother me. Most people are so funny about it. They want to know if I can hear better than others or if I can tell when I'm going to bump into something. I wish I could. It would be a lot easier on my shins. Have you... Have you always been blind? No, I was 12 when it happened. I remember what the sky looks like, and a tree, and a lake with the sun on it. When you can remember it, it's not so bad. You know what I do wonder about, though? No, what? When I meet someone, I, I always wonder what they look like. Mr. Favor, for instance. Is he a big man who takes long strides when he walks? That's pretty close. Let's see, who else? Mr. Wishbone, is he short and fat and bald? Most of his hair is sunk down to his chin. See, I can guess what someone looks like, but I never know if I'm right. You know how I picture you, Mr. Trask? How? Well, you're a big man, too, and... And you have a face that's, oh, sad and solemn and wise in a way. And your eyes are blue or maybe gray, deep set and they smile a lot. You must be very handsome, Mr. Trask. Am I close? That's a terrible question, isn't it? I tell you, you're handsome, so anything you say is wrong. If you say yes, you're a braggart. If you say no, you're impolite. I'm sorry. It's all right. Doesn't matter how I look. Then let me put my hands on your face and I'll be able to do no. it. I'm sorry. I, I just wanted to... I'm sorry. It's all right. It isn't that, it's just that I got about 30 miles of trail dust on my face. I don't mind that. 
I'd just like to be able to picture you when we talk. Please. All right. Just give me a minute to wash up. Just take a minute. I want you to be me for just one minute. Now don't don't say anything. Just one minute, that's all I'm asking. Miss Curtis. That didn't take long. No. Did you, Mr. Trask? And you are handsome, really. Better say good night now. soul about this. Hey, dirty you, Michael. What's that word? Mm -hmm. Nothing, just mumbling to myself. Oh. Here, Miss Curtis, let me help you. Thank you, Mr. Faber. I'm afraid I'm not cut out for cattle driving. Why? As good as a lot of my men have spent the first time out. Matter of fact, compared to some of them, you're ready to take over the drive. In a way, I hate for this trip to end. It's been good for me meeting someone like Mr. Trask. How long has he been a drover? Oh, well, hadn't been with us long. Why? Am I wrong in thinking that a drive like this can become a home for a lot of men who don't have one? I mean, they get the feeling it's a place where they belong. Something like that. That hasn't happened for Mr. Trask yet, has it? Maybe that's the way he wants it. He has so much. He's intelligent, strong, and gentle, too. I'm gonna miss him. Yeah, that's the last of it. This portrait. Oh! Your father? It's the only one I have of him. They said it didn't turn out very well, but... It meant a lot to us. Both of them. Both of them? Same photographer took one of me, too. He wouldn't accept any money for it. He said it was a work of art. It really isn't. Even the frame's worthless. Strangely enough, it was the only thing taken the night my father died. Oh, Trask, here, uh, help put this on the wagon. And don't pull out yet. We'll be picking up some strays. Don't want you to get too far ahead of the herd. All right. Me trash saddlebags. Who 
waiting on you. What's that? Could be the end of a, of a gentleman. A what? I mean, one thing was stole from Miss Curtis' house, a picture of Miss Curtis. And this is where I found it in trash saddlebags. You gotta be wrong about that. You gotta be. Well, we'll see. What are you gonna do, huh? Do I got a choice? Well, you can wait till you hear his side of it. Uh, he might have found that somewhere. All right, get him over here. I don't know. Drift again, I guess. Try ask Mr. Paper wants to talk to you. All right, wait. Be back in a minute. You want to see me, Mr. Favor? Recognize him? My trash. Why'd you do it? An empty belly doesn't make for good thinking. It was an accident. Why'd you take this, then? Well, I could make believe she was mine. Pretend that I had someone somewhere who cared. No need for her to know about this. It would only hurt her. Asking has always come hard for me, Mr. Favor. But I ain't asking now. I'm begging. Best tell Miss Curtis we'll, we'll be laying over for a while. Thanks. Send for the sheriff. Ain't there some other way we can handle this thing? Look, it ain't up to me to decide either way. Send Scarlet for the sheriff. I told her one of the wagons broke down. That's what she thinks, unless you tell her differently. Will you? She'll probably have to testify, tell her side of the story. But why? I told you I did it. If they hang me, there's not a whole lot left that's going to die. Maybe I don't deserve a chance, but she does. If you tell her... That... I can't do anything about it. Can't you understand that? I had to send for the sheriff. But you can fix it with him. He'll listen to you. You're asking me to make a deal I don't know I can keep. All right, then kill me right now. Make up any story you want. You can't get out of it that easy, Trask. We'll have to wait for the sheriff. But he won't... <laughs> You better tell her something. It's uh, Rowdy, man. 
Mr. Yates, what's going on? Uh, well, uh, we just had a little problem up ahead. Is Mr. Trask all right? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, he's fine. You better excuse me, ma'am. Guess is as good as mine. He ain't said a word since he got up there. Trask! There's only one way out, Trask! Come on down! Throw your gun away! Get around there. Sheriff, if he made a full confession, would the girl have to go to trial? What difference would that make? He's not afraid of the trial. Well, he doesn't want the girl to know. What are you talking about? Look, what more do you need besides a full confession? I know that man. He doesn't want to hurt anybody. Don't come any closer! Time for a deal's passed. Roddy, come back here. Frank? Frank, this is Rowdy. Look, uh, Sheriff Keeler wants to make a deal with you. All you gotta do is give yourself up, make a confession, and Miss Curtis doesn't have to go back. Did you hear me, Frank? She doesn't have to go back. All you have to do is Give yourself up, make a confession, that's all. You hear me? I'm trusting you, Yates. Don't let me down. gone so long. What was the matter? We caught the man who killed your father. The man, was he? No. The sheriff's taking him back to Salt Springs for trial. Just a worthless saddle bum. Is there someone who'll be able to drive me back for the trial? The sheriff said there's no need. The man admitted everything. Mr. Trask, you know there isn't much hate in me. But I do hate the man who killed my father. Men like that can't be hurt by hate. But it could hurt you. Hatred's its own fire, fuel. Once it starts, it doesn't stop. I'm your friend, ain't I? You know you are. Then I think it's best that you go on to Grayson. I think it's what's best for you. And I think it's what your father would have wanted. Thank you, Mr. Trask. Again. Goodbye, Miss Curtis. Where are you going? Back with the sheriff. He, uh, he, he wants me as a, a witness. And after that? I think I'll finally get to Oregon. I think that's wonderful. Goodbye, Miss Curtis. Will you kiss me goodbye?
Goodbye, Mr. Dress. Rowdy have kept your word. I'm obliged to you both. Let's go. Oh, Trask. We got this. Sheriff won't need it. Well, Miss Curtis. Thanks. He never really had a chance, did he? Hmm. Oh. Miss Curtis will be needing a driver now. Thanks. Rowdy, man, I'll be taking you from here. Thank you. the day that man ever decided to eat beef. We're trying to bring it to the market, Sedalia, Missouri. We don't always like what we have to do to get it there, but that's part of my job. My name's Gil Favor, trail boss. I'm trying, Mr. Favor. Trying's not enough. Get that fire lit. <laughs> Stinking wolves. Two days and two nights of this. I can't stand it no more. You just stay awake and keep that rifle ready. You hear? Another beef maul, Mr. Favor. Tail end of the herd. never seen it this bad before. It's getting worse every minute. It's getting so bad I can't even keep track anymore. How many beeves you figure that is been cut down all told in the last two days, Quince? Nearly 20, boss. I ain't even afraid of fires anymore. We need wolvers and traps, Mr. Favor. What do you think I sent Pete into town for? Stick with it. We'll get wolvers. Mr. Favor! The river's flooding over on both banks, boss. There's got to be some way across. Well, I haven't been able to find it. And we stay here. Them wolves ain't gonna let us stay here. You got any good ideas? No. We'll stay here. Say we had to stay. I've changed my mind. Boss, we can't take those cattle across that river. I didn't say we were crossing. At least with our backs to the river, they can only get at us from three sides. Now move. Mr. 
Just a favor. I'm getting out of this. You hear me? I'm getting out. one so far. They told you to leave the herd. You get back to it. Kyle, you go with him. We'll take care of Forrester and then catch up to you. It's about as bad as it can get, isn't it? Two hours before nightfall. Pete's been gone over three hours. Don't take a man three hours to ride six miles to town to get a woofer and some traps and then get back. Uh, wasn't so bad when he left. You let me worry about Pete. Well, get a shovel. You think something could have happened to Mr. Pete, Mr. Wishbone? I think something's gonna happen to all of us. Why don't you leave, Pete? Go find your wolfers and traps. I told you there's no wolfers and no traps in this town. Well, get on back to your job. I want to know why you tried to run away from me when you saw me down on the street. You shouldn't have followed me, Pete. I'd also like to know why your name is no longer Nora Sage. I changed it. Men call me Lily Torres. When I first came home from the war and they told me you'd run off with some fellow from a traveling show, I started looking for you. Five years I've looked for you, Nora. Everywhere I've been, I've been looking. Hoping I'd see you. Well, how long did you expect me to wait? Well, I didn't expect to find you in a town like this. Well, now, where did you expect to find me? In Washington, D.C.? The president's lady? It meant something, didn't it, Nora? You and I were kids. Look, Nora, I don't care what's happened. That's in the past. I've got a little money. Let me send you home. Then when the drive is over, I'll come to you. No. Get out of here! Get out of here! You were in town hunting for wolfers, mister. <laughs> Looked to me more like you was hunting a pretty girl coming out of Miss Lily's place. The name is Peely. I'm a wolfer. Got a trap, too. Sell them both cheap. Me and the trap, $15. Catch all the wolves you want. That trap's as busted as you are. How about a dollar for a bottle of whiskey? Now, if you were a real friend of Miss Lily, you could spare a dollar. Are you beat it. Who you think you're talking to? Who you think you are? Ah.
trouble? I never knew you hit that stuff till after sundown. Well, there's a lot you never knew, Brad. Ain't you glad to see me? You know I am. Well, you didn't show it when I came in. You still haven't shown it. And I came here to talk about us. No more money, Brad. I'm not giving you any more money. Ah, <laughs> oh, come on, a hundred dollars. What's that? You promised to take me away. I'm sick of this place. Yeah, but this place ain't me. Why don't you take first things first, huh? It takes money to go away. You can have every cent I've got. When you quit your job. Yeah, but I work for a lady who don't like me to come into town. She lives all alone out there. Maybe I'll just come out there and see that you don't keep that job very long. Maybe I'll come out there and tell her about you and me. You do that to me? Well, Brad, I want to go away. Oh, sure, I'll take you away right now. We'll be married. Do you mean it? This time, do you mean it? What do you mean, this time, do I mean it? I always mean it. This time, we'll do it. It's the prettiest doodad I've ever seen. Old Pete gets back with some traps in a hurry. Those wolves aren't scared of the river anymore. It looks like we're through running, huh, boss? We're through waiting, anyway. We're going after Pete. Traps, nothing. Town is clean. It took you four hours to find that out? It took just about that time. Well, why weren't there any wolfers? Why no traps? They all pulled out four days ago. T-Bar H Ranch hired them up in Branch Canyon. That's 80 miles north. Well, what happened in town, Pete? What kept you anyway? Nothing. Got into him. Well, I don't know. Hey, boss, look over there. It's a line cabin, isn't it? Maybe there's some traps in it. Hey, Pete! Hey, Pete, over here. What's the matter, Pete? Something happened back there in town, didn't it? Lay off of it, Rowdy. Rowdy! Pete! Hey, we got him. Look at him. Look at him. Wolf traps. Pete, get on back to the herd. Have him butcher one of those dead beeves. Give those wolves something to come after. I'll need some fixing, but they'll do. Well, I'm kind of rusty using these. How about you? Yeah, we sure use a wolf rabbit. We'll do the best we can. Oh, let him come now. Just turn around slowly. Both of you. Who are you? Don't answer that. That's a foolish question. This is my property. Get off. Now, we're not here to steal anything. Oh, we're in trouble. What kind of trouble? Wolves, ever since leaving Squaw Canyon, ma'am. Not ma'am's miss, Miss Madrina Wilcox. This is my ranch. If you wanted something, why don't you come up to the ranch and ask for it? No time. My name's Favor, trail drover. My herd's about two miles down. We tried to hire some wolfers this morning, but T-Bar H kind of cleaned out this territory. 
Maybe you could help us. I can't help anybody. T-Bar H grabbed every man I had. You running your cattle all alone? Except for my foreman. Sent him down here to get those traps two hours ago. Wolves haven't hit us yet. Guess they picked on you first, huh? Your foreman know anything about catching wolves? He should. That was his business before I hired him. What's Paula doing here with you? Well, if your own sister can't get a ride home with your foreman, let him answer. Well, I had to go to town, and I met her there. Didn't I, Miss Paula? He did, Madrina. I was just doing a little shopping. Miss, can I talk to you? I'll talk to you in a minute. If you were going home, you're out of your way, aren't you? Not exactly. I had to come back here to get the traps, like I told you. We don't need any help. That's good, because we're not help. We're running 3,000 head up to Sedalia. They came to borrow the traps, Brad. Then I'm afraid you're out of luck, mister. Brad, this is my ranch. Yes, Miss Madrina, all I'm saying Look, is... Look, we need traps and a wolfer. You need more men. I'm afraid the lady isn't interested. If you lend us your traps and your man here, I got 20 men. We can pool our cattle together and wipe these wolves out in one day. I ain't working for you. No, but you're working for me, and I am interested. It makes good sense. Well, if it makes sense to you, Miss Madrina, that's what we'll do. Yes, sirree. We'll do it just the way you want. But who's gonna run things, you or me? You handle the traps, we'll handle the cattle. My herd's next to the river. Where's your bunch? Oh, a mile north. Get the traps ready, and we'll get the cattle. As soon as I'm done, you'll drive home alone. Or else you'll stay until the rest of us leave. Well, I'm not going to drive home alone with a storm coming up. Well, then stay. Look, you start anything with him, and I'll send you right back where you came from. Papa wouldn't like that. Papa's dead. Doesn't have anything to say anymore, doesn't he? Paula, Brad. Don't you trust me, Madrina? Don't you trust me a little bit? You want to know why I went into town? Don't fool with me, Brad. I went to take care of something for us. For us? Yes. I'll tell you later. cattle in all right? You don't ask Mr. Favor if he handles cattle all right. You just do your job. Never mind, Pete. Now what's wrong? I think they're getting skittish. Maybe they've never handled traps before. We've handled traps before. We just don't like you giving us orders. Mr. Favor, I think we ought to set these traps up on the north rim. Look, we're in enough trouble already. You just tell them what you want them to do. Maybe they don't like wolfers. They smell, mister, but we gotta use them. Break it off. They say I smell, let them do it themselves. Brad! I told you there'd be trouble, Miss Madrina. There'll be no trouble. Give them your orders. All right. I need five men, two traps to each man. Roddy, Pete, Kyle, Rick, and myself will stay. The rest of you get back to the herd. This is still part my cattle, Mr. Faber. I don't ask a man to do anything I don't do myself. Where do you want the traps? Run them downwind, far into the valley, south side. If the wind shifts? Move the cattle.
You gonna let him get away with that? I want to save my cattle. If we have to put up with Brad Morgan to do it, we'll put up with him. Now pack the wagon and get it up near that line camp. I don't want you to dangle with the wolves. Devil incarnate, that's what he is. Who is? That wolfer. We gotta have him, but I don't have to like him. Don't let it slip, mister. You're losing on. I've seen wolves drag traps ten miles to loosen the meat. They ain't dragging mine. Well, that's done. Let's go. You managed to set the traps like I told you? We managed. Cut back about a half mile. Drive the wolves as the wind blows. We'll give them time to find those traps. Ten of them. The rest will lick their wounds and be back in a couple of hours. Good. We can all use some sleep. Can we spread out near that cabin of yours? Help yourself. the wolves is bothering Pete. No, it's not the wolves. I got the watch doubled. No sign of any wolves. Maybe waiting for us to make the next move. Uh, I tell you, I'm so tired, I'm breathing from memory. I'm not going to go home alone. You hear me? I'm cold and I'm hungry. Well, why don't you ask the men for something to eat? You don't seem to have much trouble talking to men. You really hate me, don't you? I don't hate you! You're spoiled and you're selfish. You squandered everything Papa left you. Now you're starting on mine. I worked hard for this ranch. One of you mind fixing me a cup of coffee? Yes, ma'am. Let me, ma'am. Ma yeah, you take mine, ma'am. It's all sugared and ready. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Uh... Oh, Yates. Uh, Rowdy Yates. She'll drink mine. 
Won't you miss Paula? Thank you. When are you going to take me home, Brad? You'll get home. Meantime, stay where you are and stay away from these men. Since when's a dirty wolfer like you giving orders to a lady to stay away from us? Since I don't like wind bellies and we ain't got more brains than a punch beef talking to friends of mine. Break it off. Hold it. Now you do what he tells you and leave the lady alone. Mind the way you look, Madrini. You always look good to me. Don't look at me like that. Why not? Well, you uh, were going to tell me why you went into town for us. Madrina, I would have asked you to marry me long before this. Marry? But I felt I had nothing to offer you. That's oh. why I went to town. Now I feel I can come to you like a man. I'm leaving the ranch, Madrina. Leaving? I'm offered a big job in San Francisco. I got money in my pocket. That's why I went to town to get it. It was sent to me by the man who offered me the job. I want you to come away with me. Come away with you? Oh, you can sell the ranch. You told me yourself Peterson offered you $10,000 for it. What'd you get out of a place except work? Don't get lost in the land, Madrina. There's another kind of a life, and I want you to have it with me. Wait a minute. I bought you this. Marshal. Marshal. What is the matter? Well, we were down at the river. They said you were here. Marshal McBee. Even Miss Madrina. Well, hello, Marshal. Hello, boys. Hi, Brad. A woman named Lily Torres was found strangled to death in her room this evening. You. Did you know the woman? I knew her. Her name was Nora Sage. Come up here. You hear me. Why are you bothering with us, Marshal? There's only one herd of cattle traveling through this neighborhood. Yours, mister. This man said a drover from your outfit was in town looking for wolfers and traps. The man was seen coming from this woman's room 20 minutes before she was found. Whoever killed her took her jewelry and money. That's him, Marshal. I seen him with my own eyes. I seen him. I didn't kill her. Where's your gear? Thank you. Search it. Why would I want to hurt her and take what she has? I wanted to marry her. But you were with her. Yes, I was with her, and she was alive when I left her. I hadn't seen her in five years. I pleaded with her to get out of that town. I wanted to give her money to go back home. There's nothing in this gear. It's clean. Don't you believe me, Mr. Faber? Maybe he hid the things he took from her, Marshal. I didn't take anything. Who was she, anyway? Nothing. Nobody. That's a lie. Them gonna be your last words, mister, dangling from a rope? Nobody's hanging anybody yet, Peely. Mr. Faber, they're hitting us again, the whole pack. All right, let's put those saddles. Everybody out. That means you too, Morgan. You go get your wolves. We'll just keep this man. That man's word? Rowdy. Get our horses. Look, we've got work to do. 
We can settle this tomorrow. I'll bring Nolan in myself. You ain't bringing nobody in. I give you my word, I'll bring him in You tomorrow. heard me. Are you sure of what you're doing, Marshal? Where'd you get that necklace, Miss Madrina? Why? I seen Lily Torres wearing it just yesterday. Where'd you get it, Miss Madrina? I gave it to him, Marshal. I bought it from a peddler in town. Now, what are you boys trying to do, make trouble for me? <laughs> Heck no, Brad, you're too good a poker loser. We hang you, how are we gonna get another sucker? <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny. I bought it from a peddler in town with a high silk hat and a black goatee. Was selling them to everybody and said they were gold. I believed him, because he had a face as honest as the day is long. <laughs> <laughs> Pete, we'll be in in the morning for you. We'll clear this thing up then. I bought it with my own money. I gave it to the woman with whom I intend to share my name. Hey, I'll be the best man. When's the wedding, Brad? Shut up, all of you. You better come with me, Brad. Why? Just to check your story. Yeah, but the peddler's gone. All right, we'll find him. Oh, I ain't accusing you, boy. Don't look so guilty. Marshal, I need Brad in camp. What are you saying? You gonna let him take Pete? Just shut up. Let it go, Roddy. Well, you didn't kill anyone. I didn't say he did. I've got a herd of cattle down there with wolves eating at him. I gotta have a wolf. He hasn't been accused of anything. I want him to stay. I'd appreciate it. You lost your mind. You're not even defending Pete. You want to draw your grub and pay? You better get out there and fill those traps with wolves. Well, what do you say? Uh, I was a cattleman once. I hated wolves. Go catch him for him, Brad. I'll see you later. There will be a trial. There'll be one. Get this man on his horse. You go on home now, honey. No, it's honey. So now you're getting married. Paula, get in the wagon. All right, let's get moving. You just wait. Everything's gonna come out fine, honey. Don't you worry. I'm not worried. It was mighty friendly of you to stand up for me. I didn't stand up for you because I wanted to. We need you. Anytime you say, mister. Make out all right? There's no losses. First time in three nights. I say we fixed them. The river's dropping fast. We ought to be able to cross by morning. Still out there. And I say they're on the run. They're not coming back. How you figure? Our well, wolves run in packs. They might be cunning, but they have no guts. When they cut up this bad, they'll run for cover. I'm gonna get some sleep. Now, wait a minute. I set your traps and I caught your wolves. If there are any more out there, the traps I fixed for you'll take care of the rest of them. You and me are riding into town in the morning. We're gonna try and find that peddler you claim to have seen. And uh, just so we save time, you stay at the cabin. Yes, sirree. Howdy, you go back and make sure he's there when I want him. Well, if the herd's safe, how about us getting some sleep, boy? We're not taking any chances. We'll ride double watch until dawn. Fan out. Ask him, Rowdy. Uh, what do you, what do you figure on doing about Pete, boss? Figuring on getting him out of jail. Why didn't you let the marshal take that fellow Morgan with him? I needed a wolfer more than I needed a scout. It wasn't gonna hurt Pete to sit in jail overnight. Having Brad Morgan saved our beef. Uh, I guess I was talking out of line back up there. The man's learning, he usually does. <laughs>
How'd you get here? Well, I walked. I didn't want Madrina to hear me leaving the ranch in the wagon. And besides, you never taught me how to ride, Brad. Anybody know you're here? No. Just you and me. You and I are through, sweetheart. No, we're not. And you're not going to marry Madrina either. I'm not? No. Not if I tell him that I was with you every minute in town. And I never saw you go near any old peddler. Don't worry about them. They're all sleeping. Just put your arms around me. First one in an hour. Maybe it's the last of them. Yeah. It'll be dawn soon. The river's down, Mr. Faber. We can make it when you're ready. Let's cut out the Wilcox bunch and get going. In there. Good. Wilcox cattle are taken care of, boss. Good, Scarlet. You get our herd across the river. Rowdy and I will catch up with you as soon as we're through in Socorro. All right, saddle up. Good luck with Pete, Mr. Favor. Thanks. Be right with you. As soon as I get my horse watered and fed, we'll just ride into town. <laughs> yes, sirree. You're still here. Paula's gone from the ranch. The wagon's there, but she's gone. Anything the matter? Nothing's the matter. Brad? What's going on? I'm gonna give him about three more minutes. Brad, I thought Paula had... That won me over? Well, I'll tell you something. She came back here last night, walked all the way. Back here? She said all you ever did was flaunt what you had while she had nothing. She wanted me to go away with her. I had her slap her face, Madrina. I took her down to Clay's Crossing and put her on an early stage. She let you do that? She was ashamed to go back to you. I gave her $200 because she said she was broke. I'm taking care of you now, honey. She's never coming back into our lives, ever.
back to the ranch. I've got some things I've got to do here, and then I'll come to you later. Thank you for your trouble, Mr. Favor. Thank you. Get your horse. Decent woman falling for something like that. You helping? Sure, I'm helping. It was just frightened. That rope was cut. That wolfer. All right, get these horses back to the herd. Just how far does Morgan think he's going to get with this, boss? Just far enough to get back to that ranch, get his things, and get out of the territory. Come on. Because we're getting out of here. We're getting married. Married? Brad, what are you doing? Brad, you need to help me. Brad, don't be silly. Brad. <laughs> Brad, don't be ridiculous. Brad, <laughs> Just you and me, Brad. honey. I got the idea right mid. We're going to get married. <laughs> so dark and dismal in here. You've had enough of this kind of life. I've hated this place. I've been so alone here. I've been so alone. Pack your things. <laughs> we won't even ride to town. We'll take the stage to Beaumont. Yeah. Oh, how will we sell the place? Wire Peterson and tell him he can have it. He can send you the 10000 <laughs> It's all so quick for me. No, it isn't. That's where it's going to be with me. We'll get married in Tucson. We'll do it. Get packed. Oh, no, I don't want anything from here. I don't want anything of the past. I want everything new. All right, then let's get out of here now. Just this clock. It's Papa's clock. Paula. We just can't leave her things. What did she say to send them? Dallas. She said Dallas. Dallas? Well, that's where she said she was going. She hated Dallas. Suddenly I'm scared. Something's wrong. I, I just feel it. There's nothing wrong. You want to pack your sister's things? Go ahead. I'll finish saddling your horse. Yeah.
All set, honey. Come on. Now what's the matter? Why did you give Paula all that money? I told you. She said she didn't have any. None? No. She told you she didn't have any money and she just let you put her on that stage. What's bothering you? Nothing. I, I, I just suddenly don't want to go. What do you mean, you suddenly don't want to go? How come you change your mind just like that? Why all these questions about Paula? I told you, I sent her away. I know. Oh, honey, come on. It's just going to be you and me. You don't want to lead that no, kind of... No, you... What's gotten into you? I want to go outside. You're not going anywhere. You found something in Paula's room that changed your mind, didn't you? Didn't you? <laughs> to me when you told me you put Paul on that stage. What did you do to my sister? I told you I sent her away. But you didn't. You didn't send her away! What did you do to my sister? What did you do to Paula? What did you do to her? You killed her. I didn't want her. Just because I made love to her didn't mean that I wanted her. Where is she? I buried her in the cabin. Women are Judas's. They betrayed me. All my life, they betrayed me. That woman in town had jewelry stolen. You're coming into town with us, ain't you, Miss Madrina? No. Well, you're all dressed up like that. I'm going to dress up like this all the time. Now. You'll be staying here? Marshal, can I have my men back now? Mistakes will happen, mister. Let him go. I guess I'd have done the same thing you did. What I don't see is how a decent girl like that got mixed up with a fellow like Morgan anyway. One of these days, Rowdy, I'll tell you about a decent girl I knew. And now we better get to the cattle.
Don't you have anything better to do than just stand there? Done enough for one day. Buried Herb Anderson this morning. I don't want to hear about that. Had to be done. Talking about people dying upsets me. You know that. Sorry. Maybe you could do it better? It always gives you pleasure to see me making a fool of myself, don't it? Just a rag, anyway. I thought it was going to be pretty. All you know is whether a cow is pretty or a steer is scrawny. I always like whatever you wear. I haven't had a pretty dress. Ben? Yeah? Tell me about St. Louis. We're gonna ride out to St. Louis in our own carriage. It's gonna be a spring... No, no, I, I mean right from the beginning. There's a trail boss coming up to Sedalia. His name is Favor. He's got lots of money. He's going to ride up and he's going to say, Ben Foley, you got cattle to sell. And I'm going to say, that's right, Mr. Favor, 200 head. How much money is that? $1,200. $1,200. And then he's going to cut my herd in with his, and he's going to give me all that money in cash. And what are we going to do with that money? The first thing we're going to do is buy you a pretty new dress. And then we're going to buy a carriage to ride out in. Oh, it We'll ride all the way to St. Louis. Yes, we will. And we'll ride into town. It'll be a spring morning. And we'll ride up and down the streets of St. Louis until we find a house that's beautiful enough for you to live in. And we'll buy that house. And we're going to have servants. And they'll wait on your hand and foot. And we're going to give parties? Every night and twice on Sunday. Oh, and I'll sing and dance and... Go on, Ben. Go in the house, Lucille. Well, you haven't finished telling me about... I said, get inside. The least you can do is ask me nice. Doc. Hello, Ben. Came as soon as I could. Too late. Yeah, I know. I found Anderson's grave on my way. I did what I could for him. Wish you'd come in time. Uh, Mrs. Miller was having twins in San Pecos. Uh, what did Anderson die of? Well, I'm not a doctor. It looked like a fever. Well, uh, did you notice anything peculiar about the way he looked when he was taken sick? He didn't look good. Well, nothing more than that, huh? No, no, nothing more than that. Well, so long, Doc. Oh, uh, Ben. You have any trouble with your cattle? No. Well, you bought 20 head from Tom Hunnaker the other day. What if I did? Well, it just seems a little... Strange, that's all. You made a deal to sell your herd to the cattle drive coming up to Sedalia, didn't you? I have. Well, it just seems a little peculiar that you'd buy more cattle, that's all. I promised the trail boss 200 head. You found yourself 20 short. Why? Look, Doc, you're mixing in cattle business. I don't like it. I'm mixing in cattle business because I'm a doctor, Ben. I dug up that grave. You dug up Herb Anderson's grave? That's right. You shouldn't have done that, Doc. Your business is healing the living, not nosing around the dead. Are you trying to tell me what my business is? Move over. Oh, look. Drive on. Now, you didn't kill Anderson. The same illness that killed your cattle killed him. 
Why don't you go back on the deal you have with the trail boss? A herd's only two hours' drive to the south. People around here made up a lot of jokes when Lucille and I got married. Jokes about her and jokes about me. I didn't think any of them were funny. Well, neither did I. I know. That's why I'm sorry to do what I have to do. Lucille wants a lot of things. Things that cost money. I'm going to get that money. That won't give you what you want or need. Maybe. At least I can try. Drive on, Doc. Body coming through the rye. If a body kiss a body, me a body cry. Every lassie has a laddie. None they say ever. But all the boys. Doctor's kitten, Twistful. Gonna have to set that shoulder, snap it back into place. Help him sit up, Mushy. Come on, you're gonna have to take some of this. This is gonna hurt. You shouldn't ought to waste good liquor like that. You gonna set my shoulder, ain't you? No, all right. I'm just trying to make it easy on you. Set my shoulder. I think it's the pain making him act that way? I think it's the whiskey. What's wrong with whiskey? When Price signed on, he told me to fire him if he ever touched a drop. Oh, who on? Temperance man on the cattle drive, huh? All right, hang on, Price. I'm hanging on. <clears throat> All right, let him down, Mush. You kill him. I think. You haven't got the brains of a full-grown idiot. Hand me that whiskey. No. No whiskey, Wish. Well, how am I going to bring him to? Water. You want to make him real sick? <laughs> All right, go get a bucket of water. Mr. Favor. That's me. Oh, Ben Foley. Oh, well, are you Mr. Foley? This is Rowdy Yates, my Ram Rod, and Pete Nolan, my scout. I was expecting you at the ranch about noon. Well, one of my drovers ran into a little trouble. Oh, I thought something of the kind might have happened. You heard ready to pick up? 200 head. The price you let it quoted was uh, $6 a head. That was a price I wrote you in San Antonio. It still is. Now, um, about a bill of sale. I got a lawyer over in Emerson drawing one up. Fine. Oh. Oh. You think you're gonna live? I might make it. That ain't too late. I could ride in town tonight. Get the bill of sale signed. You come over first thing in the morning, pick up the cattle, and the bill of sale. That is, if you have the cash on you. No, I got the cash. My wife. Pretty, ain't she? Very pretty. We've been married close to a year. Say, uh, why don't you figure on having breakfast with us tomorrow? You'll get to meet her. I'd like that. Well, I guess I'll ride on back into town then. See you later. Oh. 
We'll camp here for the day. Tomorrow morning, we'll go over and pick up Foley's cattle and cut them into the herd. That shoulder bothering you? I said your shoulder bothering you. No, that's fine. Well, that's good. You get a couple of days rest. Yeah, I'll rest. Lucille. I'm here with the trail drive. We're camped a few miles away. I, I heard you were here. I, I wanted to see you again. Why? Make sure you were all right. You didn't wait to make sure I was all right in San Antonio. San Antonio, I was running. I've been running ever since. Isn't this a little bit out of your way? I wanted to make sure you were all right. I'm married. I'm Mrs. Foley. My husband owns this ranch, and he owns a herd of cattle. He's going to sell it. Then we're going to St. Louis and buy a big, beautiful house and entertain. Yes, I'm all right. You look just the same like the last time I seen you. That was over a year ago. A lot of things change. Some things don't. You came to find out if I was all right now. You found out. Why don't you ride out of here? Why don't you look at me? You expect me to sing and dance because I'm so happy to see you. To see the man who shot me. See the man who ran off before he found out what he did to me. Lucille, I was drunk. You know how I am when I'm drunk. I'm all right. I'm better than all right. I'm happy. And I never wanted to see you again. You never will. Lucille, that's what the bullet did, didn't it? Lucille, I didn't know. I didn't remember. I was more drunk than I've ever been in my life. I ran. I thought you didn't want to see me because I was crippled. No, no. I was afraid I might even have killed you. Well, then you, you didn't stop loving me. No more than I could stop breathing. Frank, help me up. I'm glad I got to see you once more. 
once more. Yes, because now you're going to ride out of here and forget all about me. No, I'm never going to ride away from you again. Yes, you are. Because I told you I'm married. And I don't mind about my leg. I'm... Well, I'm... Well, go on. You go on. Tell me you're happy. Yes, I am. Goodbye, Frank. I'm going to go in my house and my husband's house. <laughs> and there's no place in it for you. What are you going to do? Well, you know, I haven't had a drink since... since I left San Antonio. What am I going to do? I'm going to get myself good and drunk. you come into town. and he's gonna need a friend. I've never seen him take a drink before. Well, he's lapping it up. He's making up for a lot of lost time. Well, I guess it's his business. Yeah. You got those girls over there. They're uh, real friendly, aren't they? Looking for some friendship? Well, you know, I'm with a trail herd. I ain't seen nothing but cattle for a long time. <laughs> Take your drink over to their table. I kind of think they'll say hello. girls over here. You want to join us? Who are you? I mean, you know who I am. You'd like me to believe that, wouldn't you? I 
I don't care what you believe. Let's get the way out of here. You're drunk. You got a gun, you better go for it. Well, he ain't hurt bad. He took it in the shoulder. I better send one of the boys for the sheriff. He ought to be locked up. He needs a doc more than he needs the sheriff. Yeah, he didn't hurt nobody. I don't much care what you do with him. Just get him out of here. Help me take him over to the dock. Maybe I better take him over to the doctor by myself. No, well, I think maybe I ought to go along with you. I don't know. He looks like he might be coming to any minute. If he does and sees you, there's no telling what he might try. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll be in the saloon there if you need me for anything. The doc will patch him up. I'll see you in the morning when you come over to pick up my herd. Oh, yeah, that's right. You can pick up your friend the same time. Sure want to thank you, Mr. Foley. You go back and finish your drink. All right, I will. I'll see you in the morning. Don't worry about him. I'll see he's taken care of. You said three or four was coming. Yeah, most likely. I hope they ain't too particular about their food. Well, I've been eating it for a year. I never complained. You can't help yourself. I won't have to cook in St. Louis, will I, Ben? No, ma'am. I won't have to set the table there. I want to get all the things put out so I don't have to move around too much when the drovers get here. You've got time. I ain't here yet. What is the name of the man that shot you? I don't remember. Seems to me that's the one name you'd never forget. Well, I did forget. You know, I forget lots of things. Did you ever see him after the shooting? No. Suppose you did. Well, why should I? He wouldn't be coming around here. You can't tell. Supposing he used to walk in, what did you do? Well, I'd, I'd spit in his face and tell him to leave. I wish you'd stop asking these questions. I, I don't like to be reminded. Ah, uh, the drovers are coming. I'll go out and meet them. How does everything look, Ben? Fine. How do I look? The way you're acting, somebody might think you're expecting the governor of Texas. Or somebody you're in love with. I promise you, is waiting inside. I'm glad to hear that. How's Frank? Frank? Yeah, Frank Price. I left him with you last night. I wouldn't know how he is. What, well, ain't he in there? Well, Roddy told me about what happened last night. I'm grateful to you for helping out. I'm not sure you should be grateful, Mr. Favor. Well, where's Frank? Jail. In jail for what? Murder. Murder? I left him with you. You, you were going to take him to the docks last night. I took him over to Doc Morgan's. The doc was patching him up when I left. Well, then who did he kill? I was outside getting into my wagon. I heard a shot. Went back inside. Price didn't have to fire the second shot. The first one had killed Morgan. Why would he want to kill the doctor? Why'd he try to kill him? I'm afraid we'll be passing up that breakfast, Mr. Foley. Let's get back to town. I thought you said you were going to fire Price the minute you saw him. Well, I ain't seen him yet, so he ain't fired yet. Until I do, he's still one of our men. I want to hear his story. We'll be back to pick up the cattle as soon as we can. I'm sorry about the delay. I don't mind.
guests ain't coming. Why not? They've got some chores to do in town. Seems one of their people is being held for murder. Well, Doc Morgan was killed last night. I forgot to mention it before. Well, Doc Morgan, he was here yesterday. Well, he's been here lots of times. But you rode off with him. Then I heard a shot. You're letting your imagination run away with you. Doc Morgan wasn't killed until last night. In his own house. By a drover. Aren't you going to ask me the drover's name? Why should I? I, I don't know any drovers. Well, I'll tell you anyway. His name was Frank Price. <laughs> Saloon. I bought myself a bottle of whiskey. They started emptying it. I remember the first couple of drinks. They felt good. That's all I remember. You didn't start drinking until you came into town. What did you do before that? It's not important. Look, Frank, do you want to hang? If I killed a man, sure. All right, if you killed him. Mr. Favor, I don't know. I... Well, I could have killed him. I could have killed him and not even known about it. Well, you've got some back pay coming. You want me to hire a lawyer? It might just as well. Money isn't going to do me any good where I am. So long. Thanks for letting us see him, Sheriff. Well, from what I could hear, it didn't do much good for you or him. Yeah. Is there a lawyer in town? Yeah, there was one, Fred Huniker. Got tired of starving, took to ranching. Got a spread close to Ben Foley's. Good, we'll be going out that way. Say, uh, could you tell me what this um, Doc Morgan was like? A good doctor, honest man. I know what you're thinking, but he wouldn't have given your man any cause to kill him. If he killed him. That's still got to be proved, ain't it? Trouble is, there ain't much time. Uh, ain't much time for what? Saving your friend's neck. The trial's tomorrow. Mr. Favor. When you see Fred Huniker, you can tell him something for me. Yeah, sure. What? Well, Doc Morgan's body was awful cold. Awful cold when I found him last night. Like he'd been dead for many hours. How's Frank? He don't remember most of what happened. If he does remember, he ain't telling. Come on, we got no time to waste around here. Where are we heading, boss? Foley's Ranch. We've got 200 dead of cattle to buy brand and cut into the herd. What about Frank? He ain't going nowhere. Yeah, bill of sale seems to be all right. It ought to. I had a lawyer draw it up. Sheriff told me there wasn't any lawyer in town. That's right, there wasn't. Yesterday there was, though. A fellow named Pond. Comes to Emerson once, twice a month to take care of the town's legal business. Where's the Honecker spread? Well, about a mile west of here. Why? I was told he was a lawyer. Well, he used to be. He ain't dragged his law in years. I don't think he'd be interested in taking your friend's case. Well, I'll have to ask him anyway. Riding over to the lawyer's ranch. Don't rush things here. Well, what do you want us to do? Oh, give the cattle a head count. But don't start branding until I get back. Uh, we'll count all four feet and divide by four. That'll slow us down a little. Yeah. I haven't practiced law in years, Mr. Favor. 
Besides, I'm not sure I'd be interested in taking your friend's case anyway. You got a reason for that? I, uh, I saw him yesterday afternoon. Oh, where? Well, I'd been to town. I was riding back. Your friend came riding up from the Foley Ranch. I passed him on the road. Well, what does that prove? Nothing. I saw his face, though. It wasn't entirely sane. Foley didn't mention anything about prices having been in his ranch yesterday afternoon. Well, probably didn't know. Hey, what's Mrs. Foley like? Very pretty girl. She used to sing in saloons and stuff. Keeps pretty much to herself, though. I suppose the fact she's lame has something to do with it. She wasn't always lame, you know. What happened to her? Ben told me once. He met her in San Antonio. A drunken cowhand shot her by accident. A drunken cowhand? Did she ever mention his name? Not according to Ben. There was something the sheriff wanted me to tell you. What's that? I got to Dr. Morgan's. The body was cold. Oh? Interesting. You get paid for your services, Mr. Honecker. Frank Price has got quite a bit of back pay coming. If that ain't enough, I'll make up the difference. Well, I don't need the money, Mr. Favor. I just sold 20 head of cattle to Ben Foley at a very nice profit. I'm buying Foley's herd. I know you are. Why is he buying cattle from you? I imagine he didn't have as many as he'd agreed to deliver to you. Why don't you ask Ben? I'll do that. First of all, though, I want a lawyer for Frank Price. Mr. Favor, you've got one. Mr. Favor, I, I don't know what you're talking about. It isn't very hard to understand, Mrs. Foley. Was Frank Price here yesterday afternoon? I, I'm a very busy woman. I got lots of things to do. I got to cook and clean. Was and... Frank Price here yesterday afternoon? I don't know any Frank Price. He was seen here. Who saw him? Ben? Oh. So he was here then. How long was Frank here yesterday afternoon? I don't know what you're thinking, Mr. Faber. I didn't even let him in this house. He rode up like nothing had changed. He didn't realize I'm married now, and my husband's going to sell this ranch and, and his cattle, and he's going to take me to St. Louis, and we'll have a fine home and, and entertain people. Is that what you told him? Of course I did. Is there any chance that your husband's on here? You're asking too many questions. Frank Price is slated to hang. Why should that make any difference to me? Sure. I knew Frank Price. And look. This is what he did to me. And then he rode away. And I never saw him again until yesterday. And yesterday he didn't want to ride away, but I made him. Look at me, Mr. Favor. Why should I care if he hangs? Sorry, Mrs. Foley, but whatever Frank Price did to you doesn't make him guilty of Morgan's murder. Even the sheriff doesn't believe he's guilty. But he's only guessing. Guessing what? The sheriff says that the doctor was dead for hours when he got to him. And Frank Price hadn't been in town for hours. Why tell me that? Frank Price needs all the help he can get. He was drunk, and there are some people who know what drink does to Frank. Goodbye, Mr. Favor. But 
the third time they've gone through that herd counting heads. It ain't as though they rushed the first two times, either. Well, Mr. Faber likes for us to be real careful about these things. <laughs> well, if he's this careful about everything he does, he ain't never going to get that herd to Sedalia. Not this year, anyway. Well, his way... Well, things are going to move a little faster now that he's here. I hope so. I wasn't planning on spending the winter selling 200 head of cattle. Scott yet? Almost. Good. Why don't you uh, give him a hand? Right. You were over at the Hanukkah Ranch quite a while, weren't you? Well, it didn't seem very long. The direction you came riding up from, though, was my ranch, not Hanukkah's. Well, I don't know the country around here very well yet. I thought maybe it was because you did come from my ranch. Why? Would that bother you? Why should it? Well, that finishes the count, boss. It's 200 head, all right. Yeah, it's too late to start branding them today. We'll let it lay over till tomorrow. Is that all right with you, Mr. Poole? Well, it'll have to be. You're welcome to spend the night at my ranch. No, we'll get back to the herd. That's an awful lot of riding to do, seeing as you're coming back in the morning. Yeah, I know. Somebody would almost think you didn't want to accept my hospitality, Mr. Favor. Somebody might. I'll well, see you in the morning, then. What did you tell the trail boss this afternoon? I didn't tell him a thing. Did he say different? He didn't even say he was here. The trail boss told me something. He said that Doc Morgan was dead for many hours before the sheriff got to him. in St. Louis. You're making fun of me. I was never more serious in my life. So a fella can't sleep on the job anymore. How are you, Ben? Oh, pretty fair. You giving you any trouble? No, no trouble. No. In a way, I feel responsible. For what? For him killing Doc Morgan. If I hadn't taken him to the doc. Ah, the jury ain't said he killed the doc yet. What do you think? I kind of think so, but... It's not your fault, anyway. How sure are you it ain't my fault? you don't remember. I'm Ben Foley. Foley? I can make it easier for you. I'm the man Lucille married. Well, I, uh, I never had the chance before. Congratulations. Thanks. 
What are you doing here, Mr. Foley? Brought you something. I had the feeling you might want a drink around about this time. Stay where you are. Now pull the cork out of the bottle. Now take a good long drink. You got a reason for this? I got a reason. I'd like to hear it. You don't remember anything that happens when you're drunk. You don't remember killing Doc Morgan. You don't remember firing a bullet at Lucille. The bullet that shattered her knee made her lame for the rest of her life. No, I don't remember. I'm just giving you one more thing not to remember. What's that? Getting drunk and killing the sheriff. See, it don't make any difference. Both you and the sheriff are going to die anyway, so... You hate me for making Lucille lame. No. I don't hate you for that at all. She wouldn't have married me otherwise. Then why? Drink up and I'll tell you. You good? What were you going to tell me? You didn't kill Doc Morgan. I did. Why? He found out my hired hand died of anthrax. Anthrax he caught off of the cows in my herd. The herd that you were going to sell to Mr. Favor? The herd I'm still going to sell to him. If they got anthrax, that'll infect the whole herd. The money I make from that sale is going to help me make Lucille happy. Now, both you and I want to see her happy, don't we? Anthrax will go through a herd of 3,000 head in two, three weeks, leaving nothing behind but the fever bugs himself. That's the trail boss's problem, not mine. Yours neither. Now, come on, take another drink. for the jail. Foley won't try anything with the sheriff in there. I don't know about that. We got Pete and Quinn's caught in the back. No telling what Foley might do if he saw his wife come into that jail. Better stop her running. Drunk enough yet, Mr. Foley. Keep working at it. You had everything going just the way you wanted, didn't you? Trail boss was asking too many questions. Fred Honecker was talking. Even the sheriff wasn't sure. They were old men that you knew for many years. Don't mean I've got to trust him. I don't trust Lucille either. You got Lucille. Wasn't that enough? You're forgetting one thing. She ain't in love with me. She never was. A drunken cow hand threw into my arms. A drunken cow hand will help me keep her. You think another swallow might do it, Price? It might. Go ahead. Take another drink. Something gone wrong, Mr. Foley? Something gone wrong ain't gonna do you any good. Did? Not yet, but... Too bad there ain't a doctor around to help him. 
say to take a look at the sheriff. He's all right. He's just knocked out. Oh, oh Sheila, I, I... Don't talk. I got to. It's the only way I could make you happy, wasn't it? Talking. Remember? We we'll ride east in our own carriage until we come to the city of St. Louis. And it'll be a spring morning. And we'll ride up and down the streets of St. Louis and, and we'll hunt for a big, beautiful house. And we'll buy that house. And we'll have servants who wait on me hand and foot. And we're gonna give parties. Ben? He can't hear you anymore, Lucille. Miss Foley, I'm afraid you're gonna have to destroy every cow in your herd. When they got anthrax that bad, there's just no way of saving them. I'll take care of that, Mr. Favor. I, uh, can't begin to tell you how grateful I am. Bryce, you went into town against my orders, didn't you? Yeah, I'm sorry about that, Mr. Favor. I'll, uh, I'll catch up with the herd as soon as I'm finished here. No, you won't. You're fired. I uh, hope that doesn't break your heart. 